Welcome to the part 2 of RCC design series where we will learn how to design RCC structural members like slab, beam, column and foundation as per IS 456 2000. In this video we will learn how to design a two way RCC slab. Imagine the slab like a thin sheet of paper supported from all four side. When the slab is subjected to a load it deflects. It is our job as an engineer to design the slab such that it resists the load and does not fail. There are three types of failures: failure in bending, failure in shear, and failure in deflection. Before checking for failures, we have to calculate if a slab is one way or two way by taking the ratio of ly by lx, that is longer length to the shorter length. If this ratio is greater than 2 then it's a one way slab but if it's less than equals to 2 then it's a two way slab in our case the ratio of ly by lx is less than 2 hence it's a two way slab also let's assume the grade of concrete is 25 and the grade of steel is 500 step 1 is to find the effective length and effective depth of the slab effective depth of the slab can be found using this formula where span is the shorter length lx basic value is taken as per clause 23.2.1a which says for different types of slabs basic value generally ensures that the slab is within deflection limits assuming a slab is simply supported we can take the basic value as 20 mf is the modification factor which is a multiplier for basic value and is inversely proportional to the required depth of the slab higher modification factor means less depth required and vice versa presently we can take the value of 1.25 but later we will calculate modification factor as per figure 4 of is 456 2000 substituting the values in the equation D equals 4500 divided by 20 into 1.25, which gives an effective depth of 180 mm, and the total depth D is the effective depth plus clear cover plus half the diameter of bar, which is roughly 225 mm. Next, effective length is calculated as per clause 22.2a, which states effective span of a member that is not built integrally with its support. shall be taken as clear span plus the effective depth of slab for x direction clear span is 4500 plus 180 mm as effective depth which equals to 4680 mm while for y direction the clear span is 7000 mm plus 180 as effective depth which equals to 7180 mm or center to center of supports that is 4500 plus 230 by 2 twice which equals to 4730 mm for x direction and 7000 plus 230 by 2 twice which equals to 7230 mm for y direction the lesser of the two values has to be taken so for x direction l effective is 4680 mm while for y direction the l effective is 7180 mm step 2 is calculating the design bending moment and design shear force Assuming the slab to be a 1 meter wide strip the total dead load would be gamma into b into total depth d which equals to 5.625 kN per meter let's take the live load of 3 kN per meter square and flow finish of 1.5 kN per meter square but since we are only considering 1 meter strip we multiply both by 1 giving the live load of 3 kN per meter and flow finish of 1.5 kN per meter adding them gives the total udl of 10.125 kN per meter factoring it by 1.5 gives the factored load wu as 15.2 kN per meter now to calculate the moment we have to refer to nx d 1.1 which gives moment formula for x and y direction as follows one thing to note is that both formula use lx for their calculation so here w is the design udl lx is the effective length in x direction and alpha y 
and X are calculated from Table 26 of IS 456-2000. This table shows the values of alpha X and alpha Y for different types of panels and moments considered. Presently, we will assume it is case number 9, that is, 4 edges discontinuous. If you want a dedicated video explaining each case in detail, click yes here. And if enough people have clicked yes, you will find a video instead. So, in our case, the ratio of Ly by Lx is 1.555, which is between 1.5 and 1.75. Interpolating between these two values and solving gives alpha x as 0 0.091. Next, Alpha Y for case 9 is directly given as 0 0.056. Substituting the values of Alpha X and Alpha Y in their respective equations give the moment for X direction as 30.3 kNm and moment for Y direction as 18.65 kNm. The ultimate shear force VU is calculated using the formula WU into Ly by 2. Here, Length Ly is taken since the shear force will be greatest in y direction due to longer length. Substituting the values gives the ultimate shear force of 54.568 kN. Step 3 is to check for depth of slab. Whether the provided depth is safe for the factor moment mu by referring to this formula as per NXG 1.1c, which is for balance section. You can watch a dedicated video to learn more about different types of section from here. So, in this equation, we have the values of mu, fck and b. To obtain the values of xu max by d, we have to refer to the notes of 38.1, which shows different values of xu max by d for different grades of steel. Since we have used fe500, we will substitute the values of xu max by d in our equation. We get mu as 0.133 fck bd square. Now, substituting the values of mu, fck and b gives the required depth of slab for the factor banding moment as 95.46 mm. On comparing with the provided depth, the required depth is less. Hence, our assumption is correct and we can proceed with the effective depth of 180 mm. With this, we have all the parameters required to design the slab for bending, shear and deflection. Step 4 is the enforcement calculation. Firstly, let's calculate the area of steel for x direction as per NXG clause 1.1b using this formula. We have calculated all these values. Only ASTX is unknown. So, substituting the values and solving for ASTX gives the total area of steel as 405.217 mm square, which means for a unit span of 1 meter, we have to provide 405 mm square of steel. Clause 26.5.2.2 says the maximum die of bar shall not exceed 1 8th of the total depth of slab, which is 1 8th of 180, that is 28.125 mm, which means we can choose bars up to 25 mm in dia. Let's calculate spacing using 10 mm bars. Spacing equals area of single bar divided by the area of steel required. Substituting the values gives the spacing of 193 mm. So let's take a spacing of 175 mm. IS456 also has requirements for spacing as per clause 26.3.3b, which says Main reinforcement bars shall not be more than 3 times the effective depth of solid slab or 300 mm, whichever is smaller, which is 540 or 300 mm. Since our spacing is less than both, the main reinforcement is designed as tor 10 at 175 mm center to center. Next, area of steel for y direction is calculated using the same formula as per NXG 1.1b. All these values are known except ASTY. So, substituting the values and solving for ASTY gives the total area required as 244.847 mm square for a unit span of 1 meter. Again, as per the same clause, the maximum die-off bar 
will be 28.125 mm and we will calculate spacing using 10 mm bars. Substituting the value gives the spacing of 320 mm but we will limit the spacing to 275 mm. Since when we check for spacing as per clause 26.3.3b, the main reinforcement bars shall be not more than three times the effective depth of solid slab or 300 mm, whichever is smaller. Hence, the reinforcement in Y direction is designed as TOR10 at 275 mm center to center. Now, the two-way slab are divided into middle and edge strips as seen in figure 25, where middle strip is 3 fourth of the width and each edge strip being 1 eighth of the width as per annex D 1.2. So for X direction, the middle strip width is 3 fourth of LY that is 5.385 meter, while for Y direction is 3 fourth of LX that is 3.51 meters. The main reinforcement of TOR 10 at 175mm center to center will be laid along the shorter span of the slab in the middle strip whose length is 5.385 meters, while the distribution steel will be laid along the longer span in the middle strip for a length of 3.51 meters. For edge strips, we will provide minimum reinforcement as per clause 26.5.2.1, which says the minimum reinforcement shall not be less than 0.15% for mild steel that is Fe250 and 0.12% for HYSD that is Fe415 and Fe500. Since we are using Fe500 steel, 0.12% of total cross-sectional area is 270 mm square, which is less than the area that is 448.8 mm square as main reinforcement in X direction and 285.6 mm square for distribution steel in Y direction. Hence, the design meets the minimum reinforcement criteria and it is safe. Step 5 is to check for shear whether tau V is less than tau C. Tau V is the nominal shear stress given in clause 40.1 as VU by B into D. Substituting the values gives tau V as 0.303 Newton per mm square. Now, to calculate the shear capacity tau C, we refer to table 19, which shows the design shear capacity from M15 to M40 grade of concrete and above. We've assumed M25 grade of concrete and the percentage of steel is calculated using this formula. Substituting the values, we get percentage of reinforcement as 0.248%. For 0.248% steel and M25 grade of concrete, Tau C is interpolated between 0.15 and 0.25, which on solving gives Tau C as 0.358 Newton per mm square. Comparing the shear stress Tau V with the shear strength Tau C, we can clearly see that shear stress is within the limit of the shear strength. Hence, the slab is safe in shear. Step 6 is to check for deflection. Here, we have to check whether L by D provided is less than L by D required. L by D provided is the effective length and effective depth which equals to 26. L by D required is basic value into modification factor. Here, modification factor is not assumed like previously but calculated as per figure 4 of IS456-2000. To find the modification factor, we need to know the values of percentage of tensile reinforcement and the stress in steel for service loads that is FS. We already know the percentage of steel to be 0.248% and the stress value is calculated using this formula. Substituting the values and solving gives the value of Fs as 262.165 Newton per mm square. So now, if we look at figure 4 for 0.248% steel and 262 Fs value, the corresponding modification factor is 1.45. This modification factor is now substituted in L by D required, giving the value of 29. And since L by D provided is less than L by D required, our slab is safe in deflection as well. Step 8 is to check for development length. Here we check whether M by V plus L0 is greater than LD. LD is calculated as per clause 26.2.1 as phi into sigma s divided by 4 tau bd. 
where phi is the nominal diameter of bar, sigma is the stress in bar at design load taken as 0.87 Fy and tau BD is the bond stress calculated as per clause 26.2.1.1. For M25 grade of concrete, tau BD equals 1.4 and additionally as per IS 1786, these values shall be increased by 60% for deformed bars. So LD now equals to 10 into 0.87 into 500 divided by 4 into 1.4 into 1.6 which on solving equals to 485.491 mm. Comparing this value with M by V plus L0 which when solved equals to 555.27 mm this value is greater than LD hence the slab is ok in development as well. So, a slab is designed and the final step which remains is detailing the slab. As per our calculation, the total depth of slab is 225 mm. The main reinforcement is stored 10 at 175 mm center to center and is laid along the shorter span of the slab. It is alternately bent up. Distribution steel is stored 10 at 275 mm center to center, which is laid along the longer span of the slab and it is also alternately bent up since this is a two-way slab. With this, our design of two-way RCC slab as per IS456-2000 is complete. You can continue watching the playlist from here and YouTube thinks this video is the best fit for you. So thank you for watching and I'll meet you in the next video.